Faye. Welcome to the video. As you probably know, <laughs> it's the end of 2023. And I don't know about you, but I've had an absolutely crazy year and it has not been that great, all things considered. But I've finished a couple things, which is nice. So I figured maybe we could go through them together. Something fun, something easy for the end of the year. Let's do a wrap up, let's go. <laughs> First up, in January, we have the Gollum. This is my first fully finished project of 2023. And honestly, I just kind of wanted to have a little guy in my house on my walls. And I, you know, I, I made it happen. <laughs> That's really all I kind of have to say about this piece. It's made using freeform crochet and a couple of, you know, leftover yarns I had around the house. And that's that. Next up, we have our Secret Message Angel, which is an acrylic painting that I made uh, while blacking out for an hour to an hour and a half. Um, you know that feeling that you get when you're working on a piece with like that, f the hyper focus, the hyper focus, it kicks in and then you bam, it's like you've time traveled two hours and there's this piece in front of you and you're like, whoa, I made that? I don't even remember what I did, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It's a wet on wet technique. I basically used acrylic paint in the span of two hours painting in a cold basement so everything kind of stayed wet for a while and really allowed me to mix up the colors. Uh, and it's a piece about sort of the incomprehensibility of grief. Because the text that you can kind of see popping through from a eulogy that I had written, the painting that it became, had the traces of that eulogy coming through and I thought it was like, like when you see an angel, like you, you're not comprehending what you're seeing or hearing or any of that stuff. So it kind of made sense to me. I don't know. I really love this painting. I think it's one of my best. Next up we have February. This one I like to call fuck. I'm sure you can understand why. This is actually made with the softest yarn I have ever touched. It's actually so like touchable. I've made the letters like two years prior and they just sat at the bottom of my crochet bits basket and gathered dust for a while. But then eventually I found the perfect yarn to go with it, this purple fuzzy kind of soft, beautiful yarn that I picked up from a local art supply store. And I crocheted it all together and I'm really happy with it. I think it's really fun. This is a scarf I made. I really like this scarf. It's cute. It sold at an art market this past like December. It was a bit short. I wish I had made it a little longer, but I love the tassels. I love the, the design and the pattern and I'm really happy with it. March was a bad month. So I did not finish anything. Instead, I finished <laughs> having a seizure. Mm, I don't think that's a joke. That is good. Okay, well anyway. In April, the first thing I finished was this um, pomegranate plate. It's a Corel dishware plate, which um, you should check to see how old yours are, if you have any, because they're <laughs> might be lead in it. So I wanted to stop eating off of these plates and so I had a bunch of extra plates I didn't know what to do with. So I took some Posca markers and some isopropyl alcohol and then sprayed it with a clear gloss fixative and I love it. I think it's so nice and because I put my plants on it they're super cute. They're really dirty and scratched now that I'll bet whatever. This next piece was a collab I did with my boyfriend Alex. He made the quilted heart. I installed the grommets and did some crochet through them. That was really cool. That was a nice like combination of materials and practices. And I got to work with my partner, so it was really fun. I had a great time and I think it's a really cool little piece. This is my rainbow vest. I've yet to weave in the, the ends and I don't, I don't think I will. <laughs> Sometimes the ends are just gonna be there and that's fine. That's valid. We don't have the time sometimes. We don't have the patience, the spoons, you know, that's okay. 
I'm giving you permission to not weave in your ends. I think it's a statement. <laughs> My only issue with this vest is that it's kind of short. It's kind of got a short torso, so it doesn't quite fit the way I wanted it to, but I love the, the design that I use. I think it's really cute, and it took a lot of time and effort, so I'm gonna wear it anyway. <laughs> In May, I completed the first version of my crochet comet that I'm trying to develop into a pattern of sorts. Um, it's not really going anywhere at the moment because I've kind of gotten stuck on version two. Um, but if that's something you'd like to see or get out your hands on and pattern test, let me know because I would love to have some pattern testers try out this freeform crochet pattern and see if I can you know convey what I'm doing <laughs> enough so that another person could like follow it <laughs> sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing so it's a little tough still gotta make some edits and stuff but it's fine we're gonna we're gonna do it the next thing I finished is um, my guy mug this is a paper mache mug that I made um, from scratch with cardboard, um, paper mache, and then acrylic paint on top. I love him, he's great, he holds all my pencils and stuff, I'm actually using him. He's my guy mug moment. I just think he's so cute. I really do. I love him. Guy mug moment. In June, I finished something that I had been working on for quite a long time that required a lot of work and effort of me, and that is a pride quilt, basically, for people at my work to carry in the pride parade that June. This was a community event that I organized where people came into a workshop where I taught them how to make stitch and flip crazy quilt squares. We had two workshops where people could come in and then I also had some donations from a quilting friend and plus Alex and I made a bunch of them on our own. I then stitched all the blocks together, quilted it down, binded the edges, and it was a quilt. It was awesome. It was so fun. There's pictures of it in um, a magazine, a local magazine, which is so cool and it was carried in the Pride Parade. I really am so proud of this piece. It's amazing. I'm so glad I was able to get a rainbow effect on it because I was a little iffy there while we were still in the workshop phase. I really wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to do it or not, but I managed it. It's awesome. Plus I got to use the Bernina Cumatic to quilt it down, which actually has this wonderful CNC functioning that it will just quilt for you. You don't have to, you know, move it around. You can program the computer to move the quilting machine for you. It's awesome. The next piece I finished is this bedroom painting, which is based on a photo I took from my desk at the time into me and my partner's room. I really like this piece because I started with a hot pink like acrylic ink wash as the base and it, I, I let it like show through in the painting so I really like it. I think it's fun, it's vibrant, and it's like a little snapshot in time because I actually don't live there anymore so it's this awesome memory that I get to you know see in painting form so I'm happy with it. Another freeform crochet project that I finished in June was this alien crochet that I made based on a 1978 family portrait of two people in alien costumes. I think it is such a fun photo and I just had to make that guy's face. It's just so funny and while I was making this crochet I just kept laughing every time I saw the face. It was just so funny. This next project is like a bird pin that I made and while the process of making it was actually really fun, I'm not really happy with the final product, mainly because I used this backing felt that is bright, bright blue and I don't love the fact that you can kind of see it when looking at the front of the pin. Uh, that was kind of, that's just something I just don't I'm not a huge fan of it it's okay it's actually based on like a Mesopotamian bird pendant but yeah not not a huge fan of the finishing details though the making of it was fun and worthwhile 
This crow comic is a real um, experience that I had at work. We got a lot of crows in that area. We were right near a graveyard, funnily enough. So a lot of crows congregated in that, you know, big green expanse of a graveyard. Yeah, I just think crows are really interesting. I really like them. I They're kind of like heralds. They're like actually kind of a good omen to me. I really think that they're so cool. They're such an intelligent bird. Oh man, I could just talk about crows forever, but I won't. I'll save that. The next thing I made is this cluster tote bag from Yarnspirations. I'll link the pattern down below. It's a free pattern. This was really fun and I really liked it. And now I have this cool bag. The only thing that I would say is that I wish I had made the handles a little longer because it's actually stretched quite a bit, but the way that I made the handles doesn't quite stretch the same way as the way I had made the bag. I like it. I like the colors. I don't have any you know complaints about it besides the handle length it's it works it's a great project bag <laughs> highly recommend and this next project i made a cute little like mini skirt out of my blue yarn it's super cute like for real but i am never gonna weave in those ends sorry in august one of the things that i had finished is a commission i had made for a friend um my friend is really into victorian patterns and fashion and history so I crocheted her an 1865 crochet shawl pattern called the Talma shawl which I'll link down below. This was really fun because I actually dyed the yarn myself. It's a super wash merino wool and I dyed it black to kind of control the color a little bit more and then I crocheted it up and I'm really proud of it. I think it's great. I think it's beautiful and I love the color. I, did, I feel like I did such a good job on the color, so really happy about that. The next thing I did was I finished these crocheted eyes based on the Parthenon eyes from Athens in Greece. It's made of embroidery floss, so I used a very small hook. It was my first time working with embroidery floss, which is fun, but you know, kind of splits really easily because it's kind of meant to. Historical artifacts are fun to draw and crochet and whatever. One of the next things I made in August is this wizard hat. I actually made a TikTok for it and I have no explanation other than I wanted a wizard hat. That's it. That's all. That's my one, like, want in this world is to be a freaking wizard. I want to cast spells. But I can't. So the first thing I did was make myself a wizard hat so I could compensate. Last things I finished in August was this frog illustration. TFW, you're in seventh grade science class learning how to dissect a frog, but you're over there having a freaking existential crisis on the meaning of life. Is this all there is? Is this a metaphor? I don't understand. I'm 14. Hi, Miss Maisie. You little girl. For the majority of September, I was moving. I was packing up, getting ready to move out of my current home into where I am now. And so in order to help that along, I wanted to make this like little spell drawing to kind of remind us that we can make home anywhere. Home isn't necessarily a place, it's a feeling. And so this drawing is representative of that. Something I think that would be really fun is to have this printed on multiple sheets of colored construction paper. I don't know, I just think it would be so much fun to have different colors and have it printed on each one. Like see how the, the ink and the paper like interact. I think that'd be so fun. Next up is the Mosu bag. Link in the description for the pattern. This was super fun. I really liked it. It looks very technicolor because of the yarn that I was using, which is a variegated worsted weight cotton that I got on Amazon. I use this bag every time I leave the house. It's awesome. Love it. Highly recommend. Super easy pattern. The next thing I made in September are these two mono prints. Um, there's this really cool technique that you can do where you can take a foam, like craft foam, a sheet of that. The image transfers onto the paper you printed on, basically creating a mono print with craft foam. Really glad I learned this technique because I love the results. I love the noisiness and the kind of graininess of it all. And the color of the ink, I chose this really dark purple, which I think works really well. 
in October, I made this little crochet doily of a skeleton. This is by the pattern maker Anna Wanamaker. Her post-mortem pattern, also linked in the description down below. You can tell that the border on mine is slightly different. That's because I ran out of yarn. So I kind of had to improvise. I did a little pico stitching. It's fine. I like it. I'm very happy with it. This is my Cordyceps X Carpenter Ant Lino Cut. This is a continuation of my obsession but with the like relationship dynamics between parasite and host. I just think it's so interesting. Oh my god. I wrote like a poem, I did like a zine, and then I made this lino cut, and I think it's so fun. In the background, that blue kind of squiggly is done using jelly printing technique with string, and then the lino cut is done over top of that. Really happy with this one. In November, I finished my first crochet sweater which I'm so proud of and so happy with. I ran out of yarn halfway through. I was gonna try and finish it for Halloween. That clearly didn't happen, but luckily I was able to wear it for Thanksgiving. That was fun. I really am proud of this sweater. It's so soft, very warm. It's made out of acrylic, so it is, it is warm. Yeah, never gonna weave in the ends on this one either. It's totally fine. It, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm also really happy with the fit of it because I straight up did not use a pattern. I just kind of eyeballed it based on like measurement. <laughs> and I know that's not what you're supposed to do. I kind of did it anyway and it turned out fine. So you know what? It's great. Tony Lipsy was right. TL Yarn Crafts, your first sweater that you ever make for yourself, you're never going back and I'm not. This was a random um, drawing prompt that I really liked. It's basically like arcade carpet Lascaux cave. And if you don't know, Lascaux is a, it's a location in France where they have prehistoric cave paintings. Finally, Thank you for sticking with me. We have reached December. The first thing I finished in December is um, from Cheyenne Barton's YouTube video, um, Crochet Beanie Tutorial. Um, I made three of these. My first one was a fail, my second one was better, and then I waited a while to do the third one and then basically had the same fail happen as the first one, which is that instead of it being like a flat bottom to the beanie, it kind of went at the edges. I just couldn't keep the count. I'm really bad at counting <laughs> in crochet, but also in real life. It makes it hard to follow patterns, but we persist. The next thing I finished is something I like to call my dream portal quilt. It's a small quilt that I made to hang above my bed while I sleep. I thought it would be really cool and like a fun little like you can, it's like a portal, you know, it's cool. Um, I'm really proud of this one. This is one of the first quilts that I've like put together and finished and bound off and I'm just really happy with it. I hand stitched the quilting but I did machine stitch most of the piecing and it's a portal. It's a portal and you can only access it while sleeping. Them's the rules. Then I have my granny square shirt which I had been working on for a while. It's made with a Karen dream cake and big twist worsted weight yarn. Yeah, there is no pattern for this either. Um, when I first tried it on, I didn't have the bow detail in the back. And I actually really like that because it serves both a aesthetic purpose and an, a functional purpose by keeping the sleeves up on the shoulder. I will weave in the ends on this one because there are a lot. And they're, yeah, it's just kind of crazy. <laughs> Next thing I finished is... Fly Home Goose, which is one of my freeform crochet projects. This one is actually gonna be a YouTube video, so look out for that soon. I'm really excited about it. I really love how this turned out. And last but not least, I have this hexagon cardigan that I made for my, my partner, Alex. It's a Christmas present and I'm really proud of it. Even though I misread the pattern and only made five sides of my hexagon and just did not realize, okay? So I made a heptagon and then I made a second heptagon cause I was silly and I thought I knew what I was doing. I didn't. I made a heptagon and the, the, the name the name of the pattern is Crochet Hexagon. I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> I am so embarrassed about this, but I fixed it. I fixed it. I made a little granny square triangle and we attached it to the halfway down the back seam and it's fine. It works great. And then I added cuffs and yeah, but 
that's kind of it. That's my project wrap up. Like, I'm so excited by the work that I've made this year. I'm really proud of myself and what I've done. It's really hard for me to finish projects when they, you know, drag on for a really long time, but I'm also a very slow worker. So it's hard to like balance that need for instant gratification with the fact that I take a very long time to make my art. And I think that's fine. I also don't have a lot of energy. I am disabled, so it is, it's okay. I am learning how to accept it <laughs> every day. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the year. If you made it this far, Thank you. I love you. My name is Ruben Evelyn. I use he, they pronouns. Thank you for watching. You can find me online at earthworms.com. That's earthworms spelled R-T-H-W-R-M-S.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.